Thank you.
Hello, is it me? Uh, we should be on. Bam, bam, ba, bam. Right, welcome to Heavyweight Gaming. I'm going to look for Sir and Skip and put some music on. I'm writing the word demon for no reason. Oh. Hello. For no reason. <laughs> right, welcome to the Hello. channel, folks. If you, I, it's unlikely you're new here if you've just joined in to us going live. But uh, thanks for tuning in anyway. Uh, we're going to do the normal stuff of... What is it called? Social media. So we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we're on Discord, we're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, we're on Anchor, we've, we're on Twitch right now, right now, kids. Um, you can go follow <laughs> we're the... We're on Twitch. Uh, we're on Twitch, oh no. Um, you can go follow, uh, go into Linktree and there's loads and loads of links in there that you can go find all our lovely works and such. There's also um, bar, uh, Bardic Inspiration in there. You can go follow them anyway. Uh, Dice of the Beholder are in the Linktree as well, so go check them out. What's Twitch? Who knows, Sagebun? Who knows? Um, so yeah, please check us out. It's usually us lot saying, we're going live, we're playing this game, we'll be here, come and say hi, and all that good stuff. 
Um, so please, please, please check them out if you want to know what we're getting up to. Sponsors! Because we are super international, famous, worldwide, global, international superstars. We're sponsored by Loki Battle Mats, who are incredible creators of Ooh. battle mats for your D&D games, as modelled by our beautiful look. As purely and offer the, the love of God every screen, single screen time. <laughs> it's just yeah. books. It's just books. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah, see them? Thousands of... <laughs> thousands of Thousands. They've got so many. The, every <laughs> every um, Kickstarter they do, instantly funded because they're very good at what they do. There you go. Thank okay. you. They've got towns and taverns, caverns and castles, forests, ritual circles, magic whizwaz, mountains, lava lakes, all that good stuff. Uh, courtyards, throne rooms, it's beautiful. Go grab them. Uh, and everything they do, 99% of it is on um, drive through RPG. And you can go get the digital versions of their maps. If you want miniatures to put on those maps, then you can go to Etsy, uh, look for Sparky and Co. And buy all his minis. Uh, they are beautiful. It is so cool to see how far miniatures have come from back in the days of Random Dwarf. Like, it, uh, There's so much good stuff on the store. Grab them, buy all of them, uh, get them on your maps. They're amazing. If you've got minis and you've got maps and you sat around the table because I hate you and you're unlucky um, and you want music in the background, a beautiful ambience of dragon fire and goblins screaming and sirens calling and busy streets and sugar dates and pistachios, go to and Skip. You can play it from pretty much any digital device that will allow you to access the internet. Um, and if you're playing online like we do, you can share the link of the tune you are playing and your friends can also hear what you're playing. So yay, ambience all around. If you do have to play digitally like we do and you do want miniatures and unfortunately as beautiful as Sparky and Co's miniatures are, sat on your bookshelf, they're not very good on a virtual tabletop. However, go to the Roll20 Marketplace, search Coyote Grey, and you will see a ton of chibi tokens. I'm obsessed with chibis. I love chibi artwork. They're amazing. Uh, you can see there's a little slideshow going on on the uh, stream um, done by Coyote Grey. Absolutely uh, amazing chibi artist. And other artist, I suppose. But I uh, buy all these chibis. Yeah. Woo! Sponsors. Where's my monkey face, man? Give oh, me my monkey face. didn't ask for the monkey face, did you? Also, you could just learn your own commands. I could, yeah. 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 You know, I've got people We're... for that. <laughs> Do you feel sorry for the adventurers? Monkey face. Donate 200 bits last year to give the party a reroll. They can't be used on the DM or death saving throws and they don't roll over to the following week. So if you want to throw 200 okay, bits... We got, we got a reroll last week that Sage gave us very kindly. And I didn't did use, use it. That is horrible. And, and we did really fuck up some rolls last week. You rolled week a nat really? one and you didn't use the reroll. <laughs> Mm -mm. Um, evening Tony uh, so yeah so if you want to throw rerolls please do if you are evil and want me to ruin their nat 20s you can donate 500 bits to myself and I will do my best to make them fall off the ladders and yeah mountains. it is it is moose yes right all that good stuff out the way now every year we stream 24 hour one shots thank you Sage you got a thanks uh, Sage thank you Sage <laughs> yeah. this time. <laughs> um, we do a charity stream every year 24-hour one-shots, 49-hour weekends of gaming, other 24-hour this, sat round tables, doing it digitally, etc., etc. Over the last few years, we've raised about £8,000 just by being nerds. It's amazing, and we want to continue doing that every year. This year, 2023 for those at home, from the 24th to the 28th of July, from noon till midnight, that's Monday to Friday, 12 hours a day for five days. It'll be a 60-hour stream. And it'll be the continuation of the Monday night campaign, because we're raiding Rich and Amelia's house. <laughs> um, and we'll be sat around their table. There'll be Lucky Battle Mats. There'll be Sparky and Co. Minis. There'll be Sirenscape in the background and a few empty pizza boxes and probably a Greg's bag. But we're going to stream Monday to Friday. It's going to be amazing. 60 hours of it. I can't wait to DM for 60 hours straight. It's going to be brilliant. Right. But the charities we are doing it for are amazing. Shelter, who deal with uh, or help folk out in homeless situations. Papyrus, prevention of suicide in youngsters. And MS UK, who help those uh, with MS and, and support them through their journey and such. Uh, all three charities are very, very close to friends and family of mine. And I'm very, very proud to be able to, e even a pound, uh, to raise for them and get thrown on them. So if you do have available funds and you don't want them for some reason, we'll have them. Stick them in. If you've got friends with funds, they don't need it. Stick it in the uh, charity. Uh, there's loads of prizes. Um, we've got dice, maps, candles, uh, one-shots with your favourite dungeon master. 
Um, we've got axe throwing, escape rooms, an hundred pound gift voucher, uh, other stuff I probably forgot. But yeah, we've got loads of stuff that we're going to be throwing out over that week. Um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, give us your money. I think that's it. Is that it? Are we all done now? No, no. Yeah, good. Yeah. <sighs> I reckon we could do more than twelve. Go for it. You won't have a dungeon master, Tony. <laughs> so, recap. You're in the Dar Shaladusian. There is hellfire and brimstone going on. Let's see if I found demon. First thing it brought up is descent into Avernus. This is definitely going to be some slash heavy oh, no. metal <laughs> chuffing. So we're not going straight back into anime theme tunes, are we? I can neither confirm nor deny. No, it's the heavy metal now. It's back to the heavy metal. Yeah, I've got to. I've got to... Don't even. I played Descent into Avernus on Mondays. <laughs> Don't cross the streams, Lady. Don't cross <laughs> the streams. <laughs> an unknown man with an unknown. <laughs> that is not what I thought it was going to be. It's what the fuck was that? <laughs> that's one of the. Oh, that's what I want. A tower tumble. Uh, that is brilliant. I didn't know it did that. Uh, that'll do. <laughs> do you know what that reminded me of? Rocky Horror Show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, that's yeah, the next yeah. thing that someone's weapon's possessed by. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, so, little recap. You are... Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to multitask badly. You're at the Dash Um You originally went there because, well, apparently they know stuff. Uh, turns out they do. <laughs> you took the scribbles, the Crayola drawings that Sapphire put together from the Basically. Blood Pillars, and they turned out that he'd accidentally created scrolls magically imbued scrolls, or at least with the correct scripture in, on them. Um, Ruby has uh, learnt how to speak the uh, different glyphs and sigils upon uh, the scrolls of celestial, druidic, arcane um, origins. Also within them you discover that there is an almost signature to the caster that put them on there, linked to Corbin Astaroth, Ruby's soon-to-be sapling. <laughs> But you spoke about the true, who are right now a very, very real threat to not only yourselves and the immediate folk around you, but Colossus itself. No pressure, kids. Of the three, we have Absolution, which is their role in the, uh, in the career of death is to make sure you die. When it is your time to go, there is no resurrection, there is no paradise, there are no great halls, Elysian fields, you know, heavenly gardens. It is done. All clerical power in the art of resurrection, gone. Druidic, gone. Absolute. There is the witness. Their role during death is to witness your death. But it is a literal sense you don't die. They just witness you dying forever. So you live your life. You get to the point you were going to die. Accident, old age, disease, sword to the face. And you will remain in that state while they witness it eternally. And the third aspect of the true is the harvester. Which is pretty self-explanatory. If they are unleashed upon Colossus, they will harvest all life. Very bad. You don't like Corbin Astaroth, a blood mage who created blood pillars to be used against the Copper Forest and is not solely responsible but heavily responsible for the uh, removing of the Autumn Realm from the Fair Realm and trapping the Fair Spirits of those Fair that were taken in the small war against Ravenholm led by Ulrich many months ago now actually. So he's on the hit list. There is also Echo Stefan. The version of Stefan that discovered killing other Echoes has a, uh, a side effect. It allows that essence to be consumed. 
there could be only one. So Echo Stefan gobbled up a few of himself as a sentence. Came to this realm of Ari and Kess and Ruby and Xandria and Sapphire and is currently masquerading around as Stefan. And having a lovely meal. It's probably finished now, it's been like three days. <laughs> having a lovely meal with Lord Everdark, a richer than rich Raven Homian. Um, with Ma and Pa of Aristotle. It's also a rumour that Nikolai, aka Fantonio, is also with them. And Darius, Stefan's husband, was what we uh, I forgot to recap on last week. Cassian's sister, Selina, is currently scouting the northern waters of uh, Ravenholm, searching for any sign of Echo Stefan and the ship he's been using. Um, just information, really. Anything Selina can get back. Meter. Oh, Jesus. These recaps are getting worse. <laughs> Where are you, Mita? Where are you? I always forget your second name. Mita Yasushi, who is an elven warrior from the Ver dynasty and part of the Hakamori, who are protectors of tombs, burial places, anywhere that the dead are given a resting place. For obvious reasons, their attention has been uh, grabbed because of the true. They have come to the Darshal Adusian and spoke with the adventurers you see before you on the screen and spoke of the true and passed on information. In and amongst all this, the true have followers, fiendish followers, a paladinic or a paladinic order known as the Pale and the Vibrant. Now the Pale are fiends and are so lawfully bound to the true that they will do what they need to, which at the moment you know to be Three things. Acquire a nation of souls. Give life to what is dead, which we know to be Sensei Rin and his path of mercy. The nation of souls, they are currently hacking down Fae and other races of Ravenholm and sucking up all the souls. And the curse of the Darklings, a curse given by the Summer Arch Fae Malika to a court of Summer Fae so they may never taste the rays of sun shine. That's horrible. <laughs> what else have we got? Oh! And let's not forget Sycerin, the, the librarian. <laughs> so anything else on that recap? Because there's a lot of shit going on. Uh, big dragon destroyed... Natharian and Sasha and what's his face are coming back? Artarian and Natharian and Natharian Sasha. Artarian of the Court of the Blind and I and Natharian Sasha. Once an ivory dragon, now an ivory soul forged. Sometimes dragon. Sometimes dragon. There has been two sightings of dragons in the last few months over Ravenholm. One of a ethereal ivory colour, some might say Natharian. And a sapphire dragon that you saw way back when. In fact, when sapphire turned oh, up, yeah. coincidentally. Super awkward. <laughs> Super, Super awkward. awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Just seeing a sapphire dragon. What's your name? Uh, Hi, I'm Sapphire. Blue. Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> granite. Glass. Just call me Granite. <laughs> oh, well. yeah. My name's Jeff. <laughs> that's, when, that's when a child was killed on Iskav. Yeah. They were. Awkward. That was when Aristotle created the new Lancelot. <laughs> In training. So, you have, I believe you were, um, you had your breakfast, you spoke with Lord Meter. Meter Lord Meter was going to speak with Zandria about talking to Malika. You still have the use of the soundless orb, which will allow you to talk to any entity you so wish um, on any plane linked to Colossus, including the material one, obviously. Um, Artarian and Natharian are on their way and I think that's where we're at Mita and Zandria went off to talk 
Three to one go. Castrion walks no. back in with a beautifully uh, <laughs> crochet. <No. laughs> so um, Ruby did um, gather up a tray of breakfast. Um, when I say a tray of breakfast, this is the amount of calories that Ruby thinks Kess should intake. So oh how she can lift this tray <laughs> is a, a, a testament to that, that farm girl strength. Um, but yeah, your she knees will... not with your back. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Kess will get a knock at his door that doesn't really sound so much like somebody's knuckles wrapping on wood, but um, somebody's boot trying to sound polite because they've got their hands full. Hello? Uh, the door is sort of like... The boot comes in through the door and then Ruby follows it through. <laughs> like... Are we expecting company? Are we not here? Oh, every everyone else has, has eaten. Like, everyone's been up for hours, so I thought I'd bring you up some breakfast. Yes, and... like, checks out the window, like, what <laughs> time? <laughs> Slept for seven days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, it's just, you feel like, you just feel like that because Ari's up before you, let's be honest. <laughs> but Only like... just, if I remember rightly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I thought I'd bring you up some breakfast and fill you in and maybe talk to you for a minute, if that's all right. Uh, sure. Just like trying not to be daunted just by the sheer mountain of food, which he can put, he can put food away, but he's like, Fair he should keep some of that as right. rations. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, but Ruby's like estimated like right. What would a healthy adult, physically active halfling eat? A Kess is twice as tall as that, so I better double that. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the train of thought that's gone in there somewhere. For a Amazing. week was missing in, like, small print <laughs> at the end. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ruby will find, like, whatever furniture, because the room is a pretty sparse, put it down, sit, and probably start, like, pinching bits of your breakfast, because it's a fair game. I, I don't think you're going to have um, a fight. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll start kind of picking over uh, as well. Um, most of his stuff is already like repacked up uh, if you need to kind of shoot. Um, but there's kind of like clearly a part of like a fresh embroidery that he's kind of started sort of mapping out sort of roughly um, kind of given a suggestion of what he's mostly been up to while y'all get up to whatever he doesn't know because he didn't have to deal with it so <laughs> that's your problem until he finds out about it so I'm sitting probably cross-legged on the bed with the tray between you because I really don't know what furniture is in, in this room um um Ruby starts with. So, oh, well, Zandria is Zandria is great. <laughs> she, she's, she walked it off. I think she slept it off. She's decided to forgive Ari. Um, she's telling Lord Lord Meter how to meet with Malika and keep all his <laughs> bits attached. Um, good good luck to him. <laughs> um. And she's she's been looking after Ari. He had a bad night under that curse. He, they didn't say how bad, but he, he looks like three day old porridge. So pretty bad. As, I mean, look at Drea now. She's all. I, yeah, I'm not going to vocalize that, but for her, this is. The difference, I don't know how Ari is going to... Well... We'll find out, I guess. Yep. Um, Sapphire swears that his bedtime meditation was supposed to be the normal kind, but he still apparently managed to visit with Soul Taker, and she might be a problem for us. Um, but 
let's face it, probably not our biggest problem. The amount of picking at the breakfast pile has, like, as information is dropped, greatly reduced by, like, a factor of ten for each. <laughs> Ari's at it. Xandria's talking about Malika. I mean, he's like, good luck to you, Meta. You're going to fucking need it. Um, and then, like, oh, and Sapphire swears that he's, and it's just, like, stopped. <laughs> A pen has been fully put in the continuation of breakfast. Like, it's one evening, guys. One, one <laughs> evening. <laughs> you try and have one night off. And, and yeah, then Ruby looks slightly guilty and goes, and, um, well, I asked Sai Sirin to help me with some research. And, well, the good news is that when I talk to no Ocarian and no one else can hear him, it's not some sort of wizardry that I shouldn't be messing with. I might have turned him into a god. Uh, not this morning! <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Ruby, bearing in mind that the red lady and the woodcutter and the old woman, etc. This that's not the weirdest thing. Is not unusual for Well, the um mm -hmm. it's pretty much what everyone else said. I think Xandria is wondering if she can switch sides. Uh, sounds sounds like um, um but yes while well, i was oh and i've been practicing my letters and i've i've labeled everything up so that the next time ari goes looking for a hangover cure he doesn't end up eating powder pixie caps again um um just just for you Cass, because you missed the role ruby pulled out of the heavens <laughs> her scripture is fucking bang on like not oh yeah <laughs> Mel and I got one dice each, so I guess how that turned out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I, yeah, I, I mentioned this to Luke earlier. Mel rolled a perception check. Oh, we love that for Ari. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Historically, has always gone very well for him. Yeah. Um, but, no, so also about Ocarian, um, and she, from a pocket somewhere, pulls out a small book and she goes he he was looking up things um just about ocarian as well and he found some old fairy tales and things and such because obviously he's old and a tree spirit so he's in old folk tales um but he found this diary and i showed it to the others and they said you knew this person um this is a, it's the notebook really of somebody called Kalein. who i might not be the i might be the first cleric of the oak but i'm not sure i'm the first disciple this, this Kalein may have no. been but apparently he was friend friends with you and i i'm gonna see if i can borrow this book and take it to toodles because you might like to see it but i thought you'd like to see it as well because i showed everyone else i uh, yeah i'm i think toodles would really appreciate seeing it and um, it'll kind of reach across um in sort of roughly kind of leaf through sort of a couple of a couple of pages mostly just to see if it is remotely legible to him <laughs> there's no point being like what, ah yes very speak? excited <laughs> yeah, yes, wonderful. I, it's <laughs> all in a form of dwarf <laughs> Sylvan that hasn't been uh, read or written if Cicerin in is to be believed, If Cicerin is to be believed, at least one page is just like, oh, Man. buggers are prey. <laughs> so he has metal us? carrying. <laughs> <laughs> what languages do you speak, Cass? Uh, I... Do, 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 do. I have common, draconic, uh, infernal, and Sylvan. Okay, so you, you can read the majority of it, and it is notes of their travels from the Toan Highlands um, across 
a place called. Oh shit! Give me a sec. <laughs> Is that with one or two eyes? <laughs> two. <laughs> just, just for my notes. <laughs> yeah, Colleen, Colleen's from the Towen Highlands originally. That, that kind of feels like it tracks. The gnomish he clan is, of the bear. Yes, I was going to say, if I recall, he was clan Gorm. Yep. yep. Which is um, the gnomish oak equivalent, really, because the gnomes do animals rather than trees. Can I confirm something just in the off chance that Luke has entirely misunderstood Colleen this entire time? Colleen was not, in fact, a gnome. Nope. No, just confirming, because I was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because that would have Kale- been a lot Kale- of, like... Ruby's not a halfling, she's still planning that way. The best way I can describe Colleen is a... blonde-haired Celtic armoured warrior. Yeah, I, I yeah. kind of... It was like, he's kind of Eldrin. Yeah, 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 they've got that, yeah. Colleen definitely had a taller presence. <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh yeah, so the place they travelled from, from the Tolan Highlands, was Galclet. You just... Mm, you're a fair, you might... Give me a history check. Oof, look at me, rolling dice and everything now. I mean, it's a history check, it's not going to be great, but... Could be worse. Uh, that is a 17. Okay. So the word Galclet is familiar to you. Not the depths of its history, but there is a link between the the, the country that was called um, Galclet and Ravenholm. But it's historical. Like You can't really yeah. pull back details. But back in the day, there was a connection between the two nations. Excuse me. And then he gets to Ravenholm, and you see odd bits. Copper Forest is mentioned, Jezerit, um, and his... And Ocarian is mentioned a couple of times. There are... Comments on Orcarian's presence. Orcarianness. <laughs> yes, Orcarianness. Um, but there is a hell of a lot of respect in the writings um, aimed at Orcarian. But it is just someone's personal notes of going on yeah. a, a trek. And if you keep flicking, there are pages of being uh, very proud uh, about the Jezzeri asking them to remain as the guardian of the uh, Copper Forest because it was never Cullen's plan according to the notes. They were going to keep going west. I I think Tiddles would be really touched to receive this. Lord Peter said he... Was it just in the... How did they... How did it end up here? Did Ruby just... Yeah, all the same information, Ruby. <laughs> it kind of said more as like a question to the in general uh, a pondered aloud as opposed to a uh, hey Ruby <laughs> <laughs> who did it? Um, <laughs> you'll kind of sort of rearrange everything back kind of neatly make sure everything's because i'm presuming at the age that it would guesstimatedly be um it's probably possibly a little little bit delicate um so just make sure that everything's kind of nicely kind of still tucked in etc uh, and pass it pass it back across to her goes back into a pocket and that's I... quite the find it is um we were also looking at um and she just just to the feather in her hair peacocks and and things and, and we found out some some interesting things but Interesting. I... How... Oh, um, Atoria has a peacock god, and in Vey, they're they're very respected creatures, and the, the feathers might have, like they're said to have magical powers. And he offered to like check this one, but it 
felt a bit personal to ask of someone I don't know well, so I might ask Ari to look over it instead, but I was thinking that I need to grow up. I think the ruby that we need isn't the ruby who fusses around making tea, it's the ruby who just sort of shrugs because Ruby is like not so good at the blowing of own horn but the sort of the trail off is the like slays demons makes gods oh, Ruby. <laughs> recreates magical <laughs> forests <laughs> and I was thinking that to know who I can be I should know who I was and or the other found only other foundling I know. And I know who I need to ask. But what if I don't like what I find out? You won't know until you find out, but also do not change yourself for this situation. There's it's already taken so, so much from all of us. Don't let it take your hope as well. No, I just... I still need to be me, but... Maybe... If gives up and sort of waves it off and just like reaches for the tray and eats a handful uh, of feelings because that, that's that's how half is <laughs> No. Are you by all measures probably the youngest of us here? Yes, but part of that is reminding us why it's so important that we do this. Because Sapphire's always been a warrior. Drea and I have seen more summers and more now winters than most possibly ever will. And with how things are going, might ever again. Ari is facing his own extra levels of mortality that he never knew he could imagine. We need the brightness that is you, Ruby. As you are, by all means, find out part of where you are from, but do not let that change the family you already have. No, there's a I know who I am. I know who my family is. I think the information of who I was, maybe it could lead us to, to other allies. Maybe I can find out more about myself. But Casper taking me to execute someone. And you should always question that. Because if you stop questioning that then you're just as bad as the people that we're trying to remove no ruby if there is ever a day where you want to have to do that that's the day that you stop being the Ruby that we know and love. And is... that would be a very scary day for all of Colossus. Which is why if I pull myself together a bit, it might not break me and do that when I have to do it. You put extra pressure on yourself but I think the situation itself already has covered 
you will grow through this whether you want to or not but do not make this any harder than on yourself than you, it already is you are resilient beyond your own comprehension beyond mine that's for sure i could not have gone through what you've gone through at your age i was still beating the shit out of people for looking wrong at Drea when I was your age. You, d you don't understand how wonderful you already are. You're supposed to say nice things about me. That's, that's, that's like the little joking of that. That like the... That's the other sibling that you should be speaking to if you want abuse. Drea's better at that than me. Not me. Ask Ari. Yeah. I think she secretly likes me, though. She definitely does. She won't tell you it. Unless you're very lucky, but she holds you in high esteem. No, oh, no, I know. She told me I wasn't useless once. It's almost marriage to Drea. <laughs> That that does get like a, a bit of a, a giggle. It's like you remember the the unicorn? I still have the means of summoning him and if he doesn't know then I think he will know who does, so will you come with me when I find somewhere I can reasonably summon an eighteen hand <laughs> unicorn and ask him. God. Because of I trust the others. I love the others, but... It's different. They... They can't quite understand. No, I... The... I know. Now, help me put some more of this breakfast away, and then help me put what's left of it back where it belongs, and... We'll go see what Ari's summoned. Drea's maybe told this Permita out of pure peevishness um, and hope that Sapphire is still with us by the time we get there. But you've... You're going to be okay, Ruby. If any of us have the resilience for this, it's, it's you. She would have applied, but she's already got like another, mm, mm, mm. like the <laughs> sheer amount of food that only a teenager Three hash can fit in and out. Two it rashes is... of bacon, just yeah. like halfway down the gullet. Like yeah. hamster. So yeah, he you... waited till it was full so she couldn't reply. <laughs> <laughs> All this trick of the book. So while you two are hamster nibbling, what is Sapphire and Ari doing? Crying. No, it's just me. <laughs> Some, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I woke there. up this morning and I was like, I'm going to make my cry today. <laughs> so it's Tuesday. I'm going to say it's Tuesday, it's fine. So what are you two okay, uh, lovely adventurers crying because it wasn't to do with Ari, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, What are we doing? Um... <laughs> Ari, at some point, did actually want to go talk to Xerxes about three sessions ago. So do it, do it. This is maybe this is what he wants to go for. speak to Xerxes. I yeah. <laughs> can't remember why he wanted to go speak to Xerxes, but hey. Well, Xerxes ain't far ago. away. <laughs> no. So the, the mentors, the four mentors, uh, the mentors, um, they 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 have their breakfast and they go about what seems to be a daily routine of sorts. Um, you see Xerxes, um, she is, she has a, when you first, excuse me, when you first turned up the day before, she was professional, uh, sort of, but um, since Lord Meter has arrived, and you saw them conversing earlier, there is a bit more, uh, what's the word, 
relax relaxation is not the word I was looking for, but she's she seems more chilled and relaxed. She's softened the professionalism. But she is available if you wish to speak to her. Yeah, he'll kind of like he'll wait obviously till she's done what she's doing, etc. And maybe like kind of at a quiet moment, just kind of um, go up to her and just be like, "Do you mind if I have a quiet word with yourself?" As you approach, she closes her one of her many spell books. Uh, uh, yes, uh, of course, Aristotle. Um, in private, or are you happy to just sit? Uh, happy to just yeah, sit and have a chat, really. Um, strawberries. Um, and she just pushes the plate of strawberries towards you. He'll happily take some strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> just put them in your pocket. No, no, I meant. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. um, strawberries and cream. I've got a feeling you like strawberries. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> strawberries and champagne. It's like this bottle of Bolly of his out of nowhere. And a straw. <laughs> mm, so, uh, how can but I It's help? breakfast time. Um, I was curious, really. Um, you knew my brother best when he studied here. Uh, yes. I know you were sort of more his mentor. Um... Like, a lot of people have obviously told me, including my own brother, to be fair, um, how gifted he is and how much better he is than every other wizard. I Obviously, I don't really understand wizard stuff. Um, but I know that he is incredibly gifted. Just wanted your opinion on it as his mentor when he was studying here. Stefan exceeds gifted um, we have students come here to um, heighten their, 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 their natural abilities there are folks that can get to a level of skill in their, in their chosen field by sheer determination and waking up before everybody else and running the ruins and she gestures towards the, the castle um, and there are those that study books those that are able to be in tune with the uh, the world around them more than others. Most of the students that come here are um, potentially more have a greater potential. Uh, hmm. Most of the students that come here have a greater potential than we do as mentors. We are not here to show them that we are more powerful and then pass on those powers we are here to help them reach their potential and and more if there is more there um and i i dare say stefan was my mentor for a time the way he approached the arcane was and honestly it was a question your parents put to us was stefan gifted to ravenholm to the family to the wall not just gifted as an individual. There are elements of Stefan's intellect that are unfathomable. Um, you say you don't understand wizards so much in the way we, in the way one is more powerful than the other. It is simply the way Nikolai would have taught those on the wall how to use a rapier or a short sword, or a bow and arrow, or how to dance. Um, and sooner or later, the student surpasses the, the teacher, as is known through all time and many cultures. It's the same with wizardry. There are those that are able to do the dance better than others, and those that are able to teach the dance, knowing that those they are teaching will one day be better than them, it is it is all the same. We use books and arcana you use and suggestions towards the sword at your side. Um spends a brief moment looking at it and admiring its design. Um so that is and to compare Stefan to another arcane wielder or at least in the schools of wizardry. No blade could match his that I know of exists in the whole of Colossus. We 
he is known, his reputation at least, we passed on to the Kithlo Hadusian in um, the Ver Dynasty and the Hadusian in Atoria. And we watched, many watched, whilst myself and Stefan learnt and passed knowledge to one another. And no one had an answer of why Stefan was as gifted as he was, or is. There are elements, there are tears in the uh, pools of our Arcana that we can pull from. Some we can pull several times a day, others once or twice. And the highest pool of magic we can tap into, not everyone, only some of us ever reach these heights, we may be able to do once a day or once every few days. But Stefan can reach into that pool two or three times a day. It is unheard of. Um, there are myths and legends of powerful entities, dragons, gods, archfey, demon overlords, and such heights of power that might be able to do what Stefan can with a spell book. Uh, yeah, I obviously underestimate that because he's just my brother. <laughs> you know, that's why I thought I'd ask you because you would know more being his mentor for the majority of the time. Yeah, that's Worrying to a point. <laughs> yeah. And yes, if the echo of your brother is here and is an echo of Stefan, then very worrying. The power that echo will wield, if it matches the Stefan we know, will take a lot to deal with. That puts it in perspective where I can actually understand just how powerful he is. And that's what I was struggling with because I haven't really come across that many wizards. Um, I'm not. I have a little arcane training, but nowhere near that level. If Nikolai taught you to dance, then you know magic, Aristotle. Thank you for your help. Um, that's, that's what we are here for. Uh, Any time you wish to ask. Have you decided what you wish to do with the soundless orb? I need to talk to the others when kind of looks around is like when they're back. I swear I saw Ruby here at Yeah. Um yeah, we need to have a chat and see what we want to do because yeah, I think using it would be useful. Just don't know in what direction yet. Um, but thank you for your help. Not a problem. And then she kind of nudges the last few strawberries on the plate towards you, seeing as you were nibbling them straight away. <laughs> he will take them, do like a little bow, and uh, go back to probably back over to Sapphire. Sapphire, you're just dumping all your key into meditation, seeing who you can grab. <laughs> Sapphire, yeah, I was, so I was saying before, like, Sapphire has had some, taken some time, some alone time. Yes. Um, but wants to try and do something slightly different with meditation. Ooh, I do like different. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's I'll hopefully less dangerous than his demon. usual. <laughs> um, essentially, what he's going to try and do is, normally there's kind of a two-way connection with it. What he's going to try and do is pour some key into it to basically kind of do a long distance sending rather than appearing and chatting. He just wants Soul Taker to hear him and not be able to reply, essentially. Okay. Whether it works or not is another thing. So he's going to pump three points of key into just sending a message, basically. And it's going to just be... So um, before you do the message, I want you to okay. do a D20 plus your Ooh. wisdom modifier plus your proficiency... Plus how many points of key do you put into it? It's a high DC. But you do I would have... like okay. everyone to know that Kess is taking his next uh, level as a soothsayer because he called <laughs> us. I... 
I wish you'd come to visit Ari first. He could have got some bardic inspiration. <laughs> 26. Go. Cool. What do you say? Um, it doesn't have to be like this. I know about your daughter. We can get her back without dealing. And that'll be it. So he's more kind of trying to give her food for thought rather yeah. than letting her argue back like before. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's going to be cold, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. You... As if the words manifest into a being of that sort of spiritual essence, when you go deep into your meditation, it goes full anime around you, sort of like the air, and you can see like grains of sand just kind of resting off the ground, sort of feeling. And you see that, like I said, like a bit of a humanoid shape form as you, as you speak the words to the air, focusing through your meditation and the key channels through. And it stands in front of you as if listening, maybe two inches tall, letting those words wrap around it, and then whoosh, it dissipates into grains of nothingness. But you feel confident that your message went somewhere. <laughs> and mark off your three key points. Cool. Oh. Three. Cool. Ben, yeah, kind of just because <clears throat> he spent, he very much spent the night um, considering, and I think he's coming to the agreement that if it comes down to it, he's going to have to get between her and her goal. So that's a kind of last ditch effort. So, Sapphire, there's a moment of like just deep breath, puts on a puts on a smile, walks over. I guess, I guess to Ari. Um, Hey, well, what's what's going on? Did you have a nice chat? Yeah, I'm just wanting to know a little bit more about Stefan. Just kind of seemed like the person to ask, really, considering, um, like, they <laughs> they were his mentor for years. Um, it kind of made more sense to ask them. I meant to ask them last night, I just forgot. There's lots of things going on. Well, yeah, it's kind of weird when you've got that whole, yeah, we're siblings, but also haven't kind of dealt directly for a long time because life is like that yeah, um that's... yeah i know how you feel <laughs> yeah we need uh any any further ideas on what to use the orb for before we make a plan on where to go next i don't really know there's a lot of options um i think just trying to get everyone together and discuss it properly um, without making any hasty decisions on it um, would be good I mean, it's happening, Sasha and Artarian are on the way though, so no doubt they'll cause a fuss Well, depending on what they say, it may give us some more direction anyway Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well They've... They're a lot They're a lot of use actually um, But Kind of been an admirer of Nathan and Sasha for quite a long time, to be fair. It's under the wall, you know, the fact that they were trapped and came out and chose to actually help us is pretty amazing, to be honest. I mean, Altarian's not a fan of, you know, well, <laughs> Nathan and Sasha's not a fan of Wyrecrofts in general. So, I yeah, but Selena was saying as well, I don't think, yeah, we need to be quiet about that. Yeah, there's various things, but I think we just need everyone back together and we can have a discussion. I don't really know. I don't think I know enough to say either way where, where we need to go. Fair point. Should we go track people down? Yeah, I don't know. Ruby was here, I swear she was. You did see Ruby pile up a plate and leave. Yeah. Back to where you were all sleeping. The only person you know to be there is Cass. You can either put that together, or just maybe Ruby's just gone back to her room to feast. <laughs> Feed the local wildlife. Not the area of... Go into hibernation. 
<laughs> That's a good plan in. right there. <laughs> um, I'm presuming Xandria's gone off with Mita um, to have a chat. Yeah, you can see them every now and then. They're just walking like the ramparts. Yeah, they're about. Yeah, 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 they're around and about. Okay, cool. That's why I was like, let's, yeah. let's establish where this is. Yeah, for... yep. So they're pottering around yeah. together. You yeah. know, you know Kess was in uh, his room and you know Ruby went in that direction. Yeah. So you can either wait for them to tip up or you can just go to them. It's up to you guys. I kind of just like look at Sapphire and be like, yeah, they're probably in the room. Do you want to go out? Yeah, I just, I don't like the sitting around. There's been a lot of it. And I know we need to talk to to Faye, Faye Bitch and Natathrin at some point when they arrive, but I don't, yeah. Talk, talking and actually planning things. You, is don't, a good you don't have to talk to them. You just know they're on the way to the school. Well, it's a good, it's a, it, it's a good idea. <laughs> Do this. It's a very good idea. I, I know that they're generally quite, they can be a little bit temperamental, shall we say. Yeah. And I don't really know what their goals are, but yeah. Um, like they, I think they generally have good intentions. It's just uh, intentions. Both, <laughs> intentions. Um, they're both just incredibly temperamental. Um, too many similarities to ourselves, really. But you know, fine. Yeah, that's that's. Let's go and uh, let's go and find the other two. Moments later, yeah, you like, find yourself. Wait, Sandra. <laughs> Sandra just stares at you. <laughs> Actually, after last week, she waves back. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. yeah. You weren't there because <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, you head upstairs and um, you can hear two hamsters tucking into a plate of food from Kess Fionn's room. They might be under attack or. Ruby's polymorphed them both into actual hamsters. <laughs> I think I feel like he'll still kind of knock just to be <laughs> yeah, yeah. like he's still, you know, still the well brought up young man, you know. That's not dragged like more like. <laughs> just gonna say, Ari has learned the hard way to knock before you enter a room where two people are alone. Yeah. There's no sock on the door. So. <laughs> he you wouldn't hit... expect it, but he also wouldn't be surprised. Kess and Ruby. <laughs> There is a knock on the door. Come in. That's <laughs> literally got that last couple of stitches to go, just like, you lot, like, fuck like, off. Like, you lot, go away. Yeah. yeah. Rock on in. Cool, you're all together. Kessler's room. It's a bit snug. Especially with a 1,200 foot lean in. And an all you can eat buffy. Just... And a, yeah. Yeah. Which is, I suppose, now that we've got the top. So I thought it was going to disappear. <laughs> oh, it's a party now. <laughs> Take it, Drea still instilling the fear With, of wisdom. Malika. I presume so. They, they, they seem to be pretty well into a conversation when when we left them. So kind of. So we've still it. had eyes on the both. Good stuff. It was still, they're still downstairs. She hasn't murdered him. It's fine. Simple I think, I think he could probably give her a run, but uh, nice. so you doing okay? <laughs> Having now seen Ari and been like, <laughs> still alive. <laughs> you you know when someone looks particularly down. rough. And then Ruby you said see them and you're like, porridge. no. Yeah. Ari she said did it, not she have meant a good it. night. <laughs> but you're you're trying to like not show on your face that someone looks. You're like, oh, oh. In the sun, it was left the three day old porridge. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the um... rain. Impressive. <laughs> He's not been in the habit of actually hiding it today, so I think he'll continue with that vibe. He's he's not in a yeah. He's not going to hide it with the sibs at least because he's like, well, they obviously know what it's like. Um, he'll just kind of be like, yeah, it was, it was rough. I'm not gonna lie. It was it was it was rough, but. That fire kind of it's partly good. pushes past to go and sit down and just goes, but came downstairs holding Drea's hand. 
It must have grinning. been. You must have been in a bad way. It was very nice, considering. Yeah. But yeah, he, he'll kind of like. You can get, pitch. I suppose. Yeah. Like. Didn't get shouted at. Woo. Didn't really get much sleep. Woo. Sleep. Yeah. yeah, that's going to kind of be your bag. Yeah, I'm not, not a fan. No, there was something weird. We really did say that that hadn't happened to her. Um, there was like a shadow Um, sat next to me and then stroking my hair. And then I just couldn't move and I couldn't do anything. And I, yeah. Hess kind of have a think back to obviously there's stuff that Drea will remember from her time in being down with the sickness what uh, uh, uh. Um, <laughs> but obviously I would imagine it would be kind of like when you've got a fever sometimes you're like you don't really remember exactly how everything kind of goes, especially if she's had like bigger attacks and stuff in the past. You've never um, seen anything physically. Nothing manifest. that even kind of sounds. No. Exactly what you just said. Like the experiences Xandria's had is she's been very unwell. Yeah. Um, a shadow sitting on a bed. I mean, it was. I mean, Ari's attack was brutal, but um. Never has there been a physical level five exhaustion. Zandria's Zand never even. I didn't, I didn't know going up to five. <laughs> yeah, six is dead. Up to six, apparently. Six is, six six is dead. dead. For some reason, I, I thought it went to three, and I was like five. <laughs> All bro, baby. Six is dead. All bro. <laughs> um, Zandria's never even told you she's hallucinated a shadow appearing. Yeah, but there's a difference between Zandria telling. Uh, but yeah, well, yeah. But. <laughs> And witness, possibly in a very small family tent, having witnessed her hallucinating yeah. is. It's a fair thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I. Yeah, I've never known that to mm -hmm. happen to Drea. Even. In some of her worst attacks when she was young, I. Is this maybe something we should see if. I mean, if it's. I don't know if there's any way to help Ward for you when it's in you. From what everyone was saying last night, I think it was last night, it's been a few sessions since then. Um, from what everyone was saying last night, I think it could, could it be something to do with the Curse of the Darklings thing that people were talking about? It's... I was beginning to wonder if Malika had trusted baby Zandria with the curse or a manifestation of it. I don't know how that would work, but... It's... She's had it as long as I've ever known. I... I couldn't... I couldn't say from what mm -hmm. our parents said. She, it manifested when she was really young. I. Before, at least, she took the pact with Malika that she has now, but I... That's... It doesn't not sound like it could possibly be something to do with the Darkling curse, but... And... Wow. You all know my opinions on Malika. It's not out with... 
the scope of what she would do. Yeah. But more immediately, has it left any marks on you? If we were so inclined as to demand physical proof, would you be able to... Is there anything that it's left behind? Is there... I absolutely believe you, but is there any chance that you dreamed it? We are weird, sometimes think... become feverish, but... Yeah, I don't think there's anything on me. Um... When you changed your very, very covered in it clothes, you didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. Big nasty handprint. Right <laughs> yeah. Everyone's just like. <laughs> there would be an army. Yeah. He'll kind of like he'll actually kind of like look down at himself and just be like, I "Don't think so." I mean, we had to do pretty extensive cleanup, so yeah, I don't think there's anything to prove it as such. But I mean, it could just be that it's manifesting faster and bigger. Because, well, I mean, the time it's had to build Andrea, and then, well, we found out you got a little bit of fey blood in you, it's not well, quite the same. We'll check the room if it was some sort of ghost or... It was she... something weird with a candle. Ruby will basically hop up, gesture at the door. Let's find out what's weird with the candle first, Ruby. We're going on a ghost hunt, we're not scared. <laughs> <laughs> if it, okay. If, I can tell you if you want, Harry. I found it. Cool. Um, yeah, it kind of... So I had the candle lit last night, obviously, because I wasn't planning on going to sleep yet. I was just sat on my bed and was just chilling. And so I still had the candle going. And I woke up, well, came to this morning, and it was still going, but hadn't burnt down at all. And then when I blew it out, it smelt like when we went to the oasis. Mm. Which makes me kind of go, hmm, Malika. Uh, the... Uh, I just, suppose it would be sorry, an arcana I really heard you or say something. that in the tequila soundtrack. Malika! Like, just... Malika! <laughs> yeah. You put your hand up as well, I was like... Da, 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 da. Malika! It's all you mentioned in Nikolai, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Got that dance in. Antonio going through my head. But yeah. uh, what would... Ruby potentially roll for a has she ever heard of a spell that doesn't burn the candle down? Or... Actually, yeah. Without rolling. There are okay. probably a few smaller uh, traditions done in the Highlands where uh, you know, the candles are obviously worldly, known for being involved in smaller rites and such. Mm -hmm. um, similar to when you did the... like. Uh, the arriving of winter, passing of spring, all, all those sort of uh, smaller traditions. Candles would be lit. Very minor cantrips can be used to hold them to represent time being held and such things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it is not an unknown thing to you. I mean, it's not like uber magic. It can be done in a minor way, but it usually represents time. The, the passing of, the holding of, like live in the moment, you know, that sort of just a held time is the things that pop into your head. Just quite naturally, like you've heard it, probably done it once or twice. Did you... Was it easy to tell how long it had been? Or was it one of those, oh, it all blurred together, could have been an hour, could have been all night, kind of... Harry passed I, out. Yeah, I, I, I tried to move. I tried to cast spells to you. I tried to shout. I tried to do everything. I couldn't 
it felt like it went on for hours. I don't know how long it went on for, and then I was waking up the next day. So, it was terrifying. It could have been any period of time. Why do you ask? There are... Oh, well, you'll have noticed on your travels, candles are used in multitudes of spells. All sorts of spells. Hess is kind of rummaging through his pack as as this is, is going on. And sp spells or rituals related to, to time the candles won't burn down or hmm. they're caused not to or it will be part of things so something to check you know a lot more about and magics than I do Ruby would like give a more critical once over does Ari look like he's got I know the right amount of facial hair for having not shaved since yesterday or well it was a week now isn't it so but is there anything about Ari that looks like it could have been longer than overnight not longer no that is that is very difficult to judge Mm. Um, it's a ruler out. Like. Yeah, like. <laughs> also, I mean, I Ari, like Ari, he, he Ari, took his time to clean up in the morning. Was Ari yeah. was pretty much well presented. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say like, is well presented, um, other than the, you know, sweating and <laughs> pale face. But Ari's done a pretty decent job of presenting as he normally would in his nice clothes and such. Uh, it'd be very difficult to, to judge, if they'd physically time had passed for them but Harry knows it was night time when he lit the candle and it was morning mm. time and the candle stayed the same so um, in this time Kess will have pulled out um, a couple of little bits and bobs from his pack because if we're going back in there and we're going back in with Ari um, he is going to use his Monster Hunter's mysticism that I haven't Ooh. done since like episode, episode two? three <laughs> yeah. uh, when well, I think I did the exact same thing last time <laughs> um, and he's going to conduct protection uh, from good and evil as a ritual um, on Ari because you know what it's probably not going to do much, but sometimes a little bit extra can't hurt. Um, so mix in a little bit of sort of silver powder with a little bit of oil and goes through the cantation uh, and leaves kind of a line uh, across Ari's forehead, uh, sealing the protection in place for, we would say, up to 10 minutes or until Kess's concentration fails. Do you want me to bop you through? No, I'm just reading it now. <laughs> oh, you got a raid. Yeah, Ooh, fine, thank hey. you for the raid. I didn't get notified. What happened there? Yeah, it didn't pop up on the thing either. I just saw it in the chat. Nice. Well, thanks for the raid, 7th row. Hope you had a nice stream. Uh, I am um, currently educating myself on protection from evil and good. Uh, <laughs> until the spell ends, one willing creature you touch is protected against certain types of creatures, aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and the undead. Uh, the protection mm. grants several benefits. Creatures of those types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. The target also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed by such creature, the target has advantage on any new saving throws against the relevant effect. Ooh. Duration Ooh. is concentration up to 10 minutes. Cool. And as a ritual, it takes you 10 minutes to cast, yeah? 
It uh, doesn't say... Uh, I think, because I think, I don't I think, think rituals th are 10 minutes. I think, just, yeah, I think it's a standard. Uh, yeah. think, or, or 11 minutes or something stupid. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Okay, so during Kesfion's 10 minutes, what are the rest of you doing? If anything, I'll just, kind of just be like at looking around, hoping that this isn't a time-based thing, because, yeah, it's already... But he, he trusts, he trusts the cast. So oh, I guess he's bold if he thinks he's getting out. <laughs> um, I guess while Kess is doing the concentrating, uh, Sapphire will fill the others in on what has been happening with his sister. Um, and like, yeah, the conversation they had the night before, like, I know he filled them in on, I think he did fill them in on, all on it. But yeah. um, for specifically for Luke's benefit, um, yeah. So Soul Taker and him had a lovely chat where Soul Taker has a bag of souls in little marble gems. Um, she was trying to hide from him and she is just straight up don't get in my way or I will fuck you up. So that was fun. Um, and then obviously we'll tell the others about this morning I sent her this message and I must admit my loyalties were a little bit a little bit split. I was struggling with that because I knew I'd have to make a decision, but I was hoping I could get her to back down. But if it comes to it, we might have to take her down. And I guess at this point, I'm okay with that. Well, as okay as I can be with it. But if we do have to take her down, I mean, I. It's her or everyone else. Yeah. But and Kes she does has. Not say, he just kind of <laughs> his eyes and then <laughs> keeps on muttering. Eyebrows kind of like. <laughs> but whether we can get her to back down or not, I now know I have a niece out there that the demons probably have. So I want to get her back. Either we're gonna either so that I can you know find her a better home or so that I can help get Salsa to back down. Ruby sort of like gives your arm a little. She can't reach to do a friendly pat on the shoulder without getting a step still. <laughs> He's sitting on the bed. Yeah. Sitting on the bed is probably about the height, the same height as you, to be fair. And that's what he gets, is the um the friendly. Cool. Our mm. sapphire finishes that. Kess, you come to the end and cast your spell and touch Aristotle. Yep. As you do that. Aristotle, your body arches back, your arms spread out, it is, and you are suspended off the floor. Your arms are out, your mouth opens, and thick black ooze pours out and start to manifest a humanoid shape. So fully, Ari is just suspended, gob open, and this black, oily, smoky humanoid creature this this the shadow the silhouette long claws on the ends of fingers but again you just see the shapes of them kind of just hangs in the air looking about uh holes as if you've got a bit of black paper and just cut eye holes in them like yeah. there's no just a bit of light if you look through the eyes you can see the wall behind ari is just there you can hear that ari is struggling to breathe as uh, his airways are completely blocked by this creature here the magic that is trying to propel this entity from Ari, you realise, Kesfion, that you are you begin to sweat a lot as you concentrate on this spell. Um, and there is an there is a battle of wills in this exorcism of sorts that is going on. What you do know from your um, monster mysti mysticism um, It's is... never worked like this with Drea. Never. And You've the cast it on Drea before. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the entity that is being propelled from Ari is fear. It was Oh. 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 Because last time it was fiendish. Mm. So it's different. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Because I went back and rewatched that because I wanted to know a couple of weeks ago. So, oh. So has this fear shadowy entities hanging in the air these long arms, long claws at the shadowy claws at the end of these fingers Stad's kind of looking around uh, you can hear a sniffing sound but there's no nose or mouth, just these 
cut out eyes in this thing. It's looking around. It doesn't seem to see Sapphire or Ruby. Um, it's Ari is just there, kind of convulsing, it just hovering in the air. It looks at you, but it's looking around you. Um, you don't... As you're concentrating, you get the feeling that it knows you're in the room, but it's as if as if it can't see you and you are yeah. two feet away. Like you've just uh -huh. touched Harry. Um, you're kind of holding the the, the bedpost of uh, of Harry's bed just to brace yourself, and it, it is that you know moment of you know hand out. Yoda lifting the ship, like you've got your hand, you know, the, the strain on your forearms, your shoulders, your neck muscles. It reminds you of when you were, you know, when you were training to be strong and quick. Um, that phys physical exertion, you could just hear this sniffing noise definitely coming from the creature. Um, all around it, the sun that the scene of the room, the wooden, the wooden panel in the stonework, the furniture peels away like old paint like if you've got an old painting and just ran your thumb on it and your nail and flaked all the painting away and be, uh, beyond mm -hmm. this revelation that this revealing of whatever's beneath this old paintwork you see palm trees and desert dunes and you see a beautiful summer oasis and the more and more the scene pulls away and you feel as if you're the one stripping the paint basically like the more you concentrate, the more strips away. This creature spins, and it's empty, empty, cut out eyes, and now staring at the oasis. There is a scream of anguish and pain as it starts clawing at the oasis scene in front of it, hit, hitting nothing except stonework. You can you can hear the scratch of claws on the stone of the wall that you see the oasis, but it is physically still the stone room. Uh, that you're in um, as it claws and claws and claws it feels like it goes on forever and you're holding your 10 minutes you're not sure how where in that in that block of your concentration it is but the shoulders of this creature sag it stops clawing its arms just hang down like an ape's just really low still hanging from or manifested from Harry um, Harry is Stop convulsing, eyes closed, either unconscious, dead, you're unsure, but no longer moving. And you just hear a a word that is more slang um, than an actual language that is used a lot um, in the desert tribes. And even though the word is doesn't belong to any particular language, you hear the word mother and you hear sobbing. And that's where we're going to uh, have our break. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so don't die, Harry. We're going to have a ten-minute break. <laughs> right. Is it really going to be ten minutes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to have a quick break. Grab a drink. Bio breaks. All that good stuff. We'll be back in about ten minutes. We'll see what this is all about. When I find when I find the break bit. Right. Don't go away. Bye bye.
Thank you.
Give me two seconds to stop. It's, it's, it's still there. Um, we're back. Amazing. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> know the it's... beautiful fair creature that is Kestrion. Oh, oh, oh. Still chewing down on the all-you-can-eat buffy. Uh, right, welcome back, folks. Just before the break, Aristotle decided to vomit up a shadow fear <laughs> of sorts. Um, he didn't decide. I was going to say, I mean, decided seems like a, a strong word. There. I was going to say, with the help of Kesfion's magical Heimlich manoeuvre. <laughs> so, there is a shadowy type fair creature currently <laughs> hanging out of Harry's mouth. <laughs> it's got to be a better way of saying that. But, <laughs> yeah. Is there? <laughs> I don't know. You, can, you, Kesfion, and the creature could see the scene of a summer oasis. Um, the creature seems to have burnt itself out from clawing at the scene, slumped shoulders, and uses the slang word that you would amongst the tribes yeah. um, for the for mother. And there is a sobbing sound that you obviously see no mouth, no, no features of this creature. But it is still... What, ooh, sapphire and ruby, what you notice is... The candle is now lit. So we can't see this. You can't, can't see, see this thing. We just scene. see the candle. Okay, cool. You, uh, you see the creature. Oh, okay. But you don't see the change of scenery. Uh, you don't see the. You, you see this creature in in Ari's room. Kesfion sees the oasis be uh, revealed, because Kesfion's a woman. Not in the Ari's room. It's my room of just oh, yeah, destroyed. It's in no, you. <laughs> it's room. I thought you went to our. No, we didn't room. even leave. No. All right. No, we came he to said before room. we go into right, Ari's well, candle, room the with Ari, where the, the weird thing not was. Lit. The candle's not we'll... lit. You don't see a candle. If one of you goes to Ari's room, there's a candle lit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sapphire is immediately Naganata out and immediately uses its ability to sense fiends. Obviously, I know. Oh, see, this isn't a fiend, but Sapphire don't know that. Correction. As you, you know, reach out from uh, Iron Rebuke's um, inner powers, it is as if... How do I word it? It's not not a fiend. <laughs> there is a fiendish... Um, 
What did Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. A little bit of something. Oh, vibe. The word? Not vibe. When you leave something behind, like a residue. Trace. Trace. There is a trace of fiendish energy to um, this fair creature. Like it is, like it's, like it maybe got a hug off a fiend or something. It's that, <laughs> it's really that minim, okay. minimal. Really tiny. Yeah. Phrase. Okay. Like you're half expecting Iron Rebuke, to Iron Rebuke to uh, turn around and look at you and be like, why are you wasting me on this? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, Ruby's good. That's actually not a bad description. Order the fiend. Order the fiend. So yeah, absolutely holding full attacks in case tries to do any damage to any of my friends and that'll be i'll just hold it there any more damage to... i mean Ari, oh yeah Ari, like i mean Ari if it makes just... a, f a physical action to Ari, Ari yeah. went from convulsing and struggling for breath to now limp right <gasps> so ari is lying on the floor nope ari nope. is suspended suspended, suspended. Air, arms back as if they've just been picked up by the the t-shirt is oh. it Flamboyant. Is it still? <laughs> yep. Still. Attached. Yeah, it's still there, and it is staring at the wall, which takes you a moment to realise it's looking at the wall because it's just got two cut-out eyes, um, away from you three. Oh no. Kess is absolutely soaking, and I don't mean water face soaking, like sweating his little green hair off. Is it possible to try and like draw it out more? Let's have a look. Now, at your experience of this particular magic you are using, uh, 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 uh. cool. Ari, give me a charisma saving throw with a flat roll. Flat roll, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you were gonna say with something on. Well, I was like, it, okay. It gives you disadvantage, but uh, Kess gives you advantage, so it's a flat roll. Charisma okay. save. Charisma save. Let me get my Come on, sheet bard up. boy. <laughs> Come on, bard boy. Oh, oh, okay, that's good. Um, that is a dirty twenty. I was gonna say we're preparing the re-roll already. Thought about it. <laughs> Are you re-rolling or sticking with your 20? No, sticking with 20. Dirty 20. I don't trust me to roll higher than 17, thanks. Cool. Is your charisma only plus 3? Yep. Oh. Ari's a, a, a... Yeah, I was going to say Ari's a rogue first, bad second. <laughs> yeah, but... Plus 3 is pretty high for a, for a non-stat. <laughs> yeah, 16. Um, so, yes, please. It there is a little convulsion in Ari, and the creature reacts to Ari's movements, and now looms over Harry, despite being the fact that they're the thing that is one and the same. But its eyes narrow in, you know, a unfriendly manner. But it remains half in, half out. Um, then it's not possible to try and like boost almost it. Almost like your target. You've kind of done Just your bit. Trying to work out if I can, because it's more. Fair fiend. It's more smoky than, or is it? It is. It, it is. Tarry. Tar. Kinda. Tarry. It's got. A, it's got a, a physicality to it. It's yeah. Thick and. You know, it's just. Um, question. Go for it. How loosey goosey are you with shape water? Does it strictly have to be water or does it have to be a liquid? I think you've done it with beer. 
I will, I will, but there's I, a difference between yeah no i know what you're saying pulling someone's blood out of the body yeah um what level shit water that's a cantrip i'll let you give it a go and it'll affect harry's next survey bro saws melt we'll go give it a go because um, um, it's the only other thing that I can think to maybe. When when you're done, I've been trying to. Sorry. Um, no, you you go and then I will cast and hopefully I get in there before Ari dies. <laughs> Mel wanted a new character anyway. Didn't she? <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm going to attempt to haul this thing out at Ari. What are you doing, Ruby? I am going to lean in to touch Ari because this is a touch. And I am going to cast Enhance Ability using the Bear's Endurance to give an advantage on constitution checks and an and 2d6 temporary hit points. Cool. So any of your con serves now, Ari, are a flat roll. <laughs> yeah, because I already have this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if Ruby knew what I heard has just happened, it would have been the Eagle Splendor <laughs> to give you charisma checks, but Ruby doesn't know that and no. she wants you to get that yeah. boost of... Oh. Yeah. Thank you very much. Assuming, of course, that when I touch you, I don't come to the attention of the creature. Ari and is end up... super cold to touch, but the creature does not pay you any attention. You see a bit of blue around Ari's lips where the, uh, there's still like tar and oil kind of pouring from his lips, but just where the flesh bits are, you can see just the, the blue. Well. Yeah, God, <laughs> starting to get a bit of... <laughs> yeah, but not in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to get a bit of hypoxia going on there. Love that. Love, love, love that. So, a couple of things. As the creature is now staring <laughs> at Ari, um, after the attempt at resisting, Ari, you get another um, charisma save. This is what I need out of you. A charisma save. Flat roll. Uh, I'll give advantage because of Kestrion's water. A constitution saving throw. That is flat. And a death right, saving no, let me write this down because I'm going to... Oh, fuck's sake, can you not come in? Right, Charisma's at advantage. Charisma's at advantage, should do that first. It's flat. Yeah. Yep. I'm just writing it down because I, yep. I will I need it confused. in that order as well, please. Yeah. Well, I was writing it down. <laughs> Good advantage on, on the, cons the first one, on the charisma. 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 That is a 19. With advantage. Are you re-rolling or sticking with a 19? I imagine you got 20 last time. Yeah. <laughs> I will I will use Sage's reroll. Maybe you can roll both you roll both of them again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got both of them. Don't want that reroll. <laughs> Cuz that's the same. Cool. Give me a constitution saving throw flat because of Ruby's wow. enhanced abilities. Don't like this dice anymore. I want more. For some reason, you hear Sean growl like a bear. <laughs> so, what was that, Harry? That's a six. Cool. Oh, These God. are going really well. And now can I have a death saving throw, please? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Jesus. The seven. So, Mark, one failed death saving throw. Yep. And I will note your lovely results of your constitution and charisma. <laughs> um, it begins to withdraw back into Ari. Uh, this isn't like it's not rapid, but it is slowly yeah. going in um, to Ari. You give me an insight check, Kess. You are currently concentrating and battling with it over its uh, possession of Ari, as well as using cantrips to 
yeah. flying attack. You feel as if you're trying to pull a tree over with your shape water. But yeah. the fact that it reacted to it, you know, may have given Ari a little help. But give me an insight. 21. Check. 21. It is returning to Ari because Ari is dying. Like the shift in Ari's sort yeah. of limpness and what's going on. Tess drops the what's remaining of the concentration spell. As you drop that, it woof, 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 into Ari. Ari hits the deck, takes one point. And, Go on. Right. I, and was going to rush forward uh, to try and stabilise. Cool. Ari, you take a point of damage, therefore death saving fail. Kess, stabilise. Medicine check, you need a 10 above. Not 20, plus 2, 22. You are conscious, one hit point. Oh, well, your hit points, you're not. You're just conscious. <laughs> you <laughs> lost all your hit points when you fell, three inch. <laughs> uh, you wake up in Kess's arms <laughs> as he's uh, applying, you know, San June Battle Prowess first aid. But you feel tired, not status effect, exhausted. <laughs> but you're very tired. You gasp. Like trying to get as much air in as you possibly can, um, you are covered in tar and oil down the, your front, your chin, your your neck. You've got like a little goatee going over. Just there. Ruby, can gone. you get our the seams wet obviously cloth? gone as well, Kess. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ruby, can you get a wet cloth? Uh, Sapphire, help me get him up on onto the bed. You are conscious, just so you know, Harry. Sapphire spins Neganata, puts it back in its sheath on his back and just boom. <laughs> yeah. Gonna try and get some of the like worse outer layers of Tari clothes uh, off and kinda keep him on his side. Um and try and clean up a little bit. So Ruby will find her own pack, because as well as water she has other things for cleaning up and given that she would have noticed the state of her clothes, of sorry, of Ari's clothes, she will go to his room and see if she can find a clean shirt. Probably can't, because he's yeah. already changed <laughs> once today. So I've got two shirts. So <laughs> Ari... I've got two shirts. The... <laughs> no, to be fair, Ari has more, let's face it. <laughs> the sorry. temporary hit points that Ruby gave you, yeah, your, as, as Kesfion brings you round... And you kind of mm. like half stand as, as he brings you to your feet and you kind of wobble a little bit. You feel that vi- vitality is a bit of a strong word, but uh, you feel at least emboldened a little bit. Um, but the temporary hit points are consumed. It's kind of like. happened whatever's in you isn't the same as what Drea had or is changed because I've seen you do that to Drea before and it just helped her from what I remember like I or didn't attack it, it was did nothing I didn't know what really. I was supposed to do but that uh, uh, I thought it was going to be demonic. It, it only, it wasn't really. It was faith. It had little hints of demon. Yeah. Whatever that tar-like thing within you is. Is fake. You saw it as well? Yeah, it's 100% from the deserts. Malika's got a lot to answer for. Yeah, she has. Why, why did 
What did she give us? How did Zandria end up with this anyway? Wait till Ruby comes back. Yeah, Ruby doesn't take long. It's literally, it's can she find anything clean for Ari to wear? Um, where is her bag and a bowl and a cup of water? Because it's quite likely that all of the bedrooms they'd have been given like a pitcher of water or whatever. You don't know. But yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> There's one pitcher of water, they've all got to share it. <laughs> <laughs> you do find cleaner clothes. I would imagine they, uh, the more Ari changes in the same day, the less expensive they get. So yeah, <laughs> he's getting down to yeah. the you know the tank top and uh, special brew vest. But a uh, bit, bit of Rab C going on. But um, <laughs> but it, but it's silk. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was going to say it's still going to be nice, nice. It's you know, it's silk Ari, string course, vest. You know. <laughs> but um. And yes, you do find water and such, Ruby. And Ruby returns. Yep. Campaign time. So she comes back and like sets everything down, sort of hands Ari the shirt and turns away to go through her pack in case, well, just to be polite, really. And it's kind of shame. <laughs> no, as if he hasn't, but Ruby has. Ruby's a little prude. <laughs> um... But when she turns back, she hands you a glass of water, um, which smells and tastes slightly floral. It's it's nothing. I'm not actually. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. It's a cold brew. Good brew. It's a good brew drink. I cast cantrip of good brew. Um, it's a cold brew, good brew. <laughs> I don't know anything more. Genie that's that's what you need that. to get to do. Bardic inspiration, you need to get onto tea blends. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yes, I will cast the cantrip good brew. Um, but as I've spoken to you about before, AD, because of like Ruby's whole aesthetic, instead of handing you a piece of fruit to eat, you are hand handed a, a glass of water that taints faintly of something pleasant Some fruits. <laughs> yes <laughs> and um with a wet cloth in hand so it's kind of like which you want to do first you want to drink first you want to wash your face first like we're good to we have him options we have options <laughs> well it's going to be kind of hard to wipe his face while he's actively drinking he'll um He'll probably take the cloth off you first, because he's nothing if not... Fastidious, I think we put it last week. Not the other word. <laughs> and there'll probably be, like, a little bit as well of, like, kind of... Like, it probably kind of slightly disappears by itself as well. Doesn't... Nobody has prestidigitation, but he does. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there'll be a little bit of that as well. Um, but he'll, like, Try to clean up and change the shirt and like, but be doing it like really slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he's just nearly died. Yay. Uh, and he's still only on one HP right now. So he'll just be kind of like. Can't remember crying. what Kibri does. I'm going to have to look it up. One HP. HP. Yeah. 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 And we'll bring someone up from conscious and like dying and all that good oh, stuff. Okay. And yeah. you get you get 10 of them. So Yeah. So it's like Lemba spread. With one HP, feel full for a day. Um, but yeah, he'll take the he'll take the the, the cold brew from you, um, and you'll have a little sip, and then just be like, "Oh, this is good," and like try not to chug it as he's kind of like drinking it. Um, Slowly, you just bring it right back up. Yeah, you're right. Drink slowly. And then, given the state that he's in, even as he drinks, we will do um, a healing hands. So you can have a what level are we? Eleven. You can have eleven yeah. hit points back on a on a healing hands. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> And given the state of you at the moment, that's probably most of your HP back. Um, not that low level, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Squishy boy. Listen, 
You know how many his max HP is? 69. <laughs> I did not plan that. Because of course you are it is. Never leveling up but... again, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> You, well, I mean, you can't write. You cannot write that stuff. I, I was nope. talking about that to Bex earlier. You can't plan that. That's just amazing. It's just for, the way for very it ended mature up. reasons, obviously. But yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> In the doorway of Kesfion's abode. Oh Jesus! Sai Serin is standing there. Oh. Um, Kes, um, Zandria passed out, and some stuff happened a moment ago. Um, Lord me to ask me to come and get you. She's okay, she's fine. She's just resting on a bench, but she Ruby, have you got this? Yep. Saf, can you catch Ruby up? I need to and he's kinda up and already half covered in everything <laughs> that Ari has just yeah. formed. <laughs> Carrying a little breakfast sausage roll. You um follow Sasha and down to wherever he leads you. Yeah. Um, oh, is it too late to say that Ruby gave him an extra glass of the of a? I'll do another good brie trip to give to her on the way out. Um, Sai is, Sai oh. is trying to keep up. Uh, with yeah. This. <laughs> so by the time Ruby's turned around holding it, she's like, oh, okay. Um, as you get, uh, as they go back down, uh, into where like the like the broken courtyard bit is. Um, you do see Zandria sat, and she's sat on a, on one of the stone benches, uh, like four arms on her knees type thing, just kind of hunched over, hair just hanging down. Still got that summer glow about her, but she does look tired. Like, like she's tired in the sense if you two had just done a, a, a strong sparring session rather yeah. than, um, you know, climb a mountain. But um, she looks up, puts her hand up straight away to give you the, you know, the sign of... I'm not dead. I get it. You know, you're rushing to me, I'd rush to you. To, like the whole sibling hand up of, you yeah, know, be worried, but it's all right. Uh, Meter is stood there and he is also, hand, she is holding a small teacup and is drinking hot liquid um, that Meter has passed her. Uh, as you approach, the students have been given space and the mentors are keeping the students away. And it's just Lord Meter, Sisa, and yourself and Zandria. Um, and Lord Meter will address you as you approach. Your sister had a... Well, she fainted. And, um... Which isn't, you know... Strange, but what was strange is... Whilst unconscious... Um... Fiendish features... Appeared upon your sister's physical form. Horns from the forehead, the hair as auburn as it is now, was uh, red like fire. Her teeth sharpened, her nails sharpened. Her eyes were a uh, colour of deep purples and reds. She holds her hand up again. I'm all right. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> But it only lasted a few minutes. It was very sudden and only a couple of minutes and then went away. And there is, with Sandria's permission, we have checked and there is nothing that wasn't there before. Sandria will ask, how is Ari? Stable, conscious. She just nods. Carries on drinking the tea. Then you'll hear the familiar voice of Xerxes, the scaled sea elf mentor. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have guests claiming they're friends of yours. S develops like a slight <laughs> <That's>... twitch in <laughs> the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely me? sweat drenched, covered in vomit. Like, <laughs> yes. God. Oh, I need um, somebody to paint that. Bite the dragon. <laughs> My own teeth. Yeah. Artarian says one thing. And as you 
turn to Xerxes' polite interruption. You see standing there the tall, thin Artarian. Long silver hair, gold silk blindfold, wearing a corset of uh, forest ivy green, that real dark green, and mm, you see the small um, holly cherries, red dotted across um, the uh, decoration of it. And beside him is an enormous eight foot gilly machine, <laughs> um, ivory plated, white gold mithril, soul forged, who is just standing there, glowing eyes of. Pure white mist. And he just looks across. Well, his face is looking towards you. Good afternoon, Caspian. Seems you were here far quicker than we were. Passes internally just like... Why do I look more and more like a heap of shit every time you show up, and you show up looking immaculate every single time? You get more fashionable, and I look more like I've been dragged out of his back every time by, like, progressively. <laughs> Level up. That's, that's, how you, that's how adventurers do it. Every single time. Do you say that out loud to him? No, no, oh, okay. no, but like... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. He's smile. <laughs> you know, yeah. You're like sweating out Just ringing your everything, out. covered in vomit, just sprinted down a corridor, and this motherfucker. She was his... Right. Middle name of you know what I mean? Um, catch you at a bad time? No. Well, why, why, why would you say that? I take it you've met Xerxes. A moment ago, yes. Completely ignores Xerxes' presence. Just still looking at you. Oh, facing you. You can see corner of your eyes. Xerxes kind of goes to like get involved in that bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've met. Realizes she's been dismissed, and just there is definitely a. She doesn't know this person, and she is on guard. Is the fact that we have our companion still on the premises going to be an issue with Natathrin? Natathrin looks at you and goes, no eagle, in a very high-pitched childish voice, as she's looking around the courtyard. I think if our eagle friend is quiet. Natathrin will enjoy the uh, the silence. Yes, Natathrin? No eagle. <laughs> Bold of anyone to think Ruby's letting Ari get out of bed this side of Christmas. Because <laughs> it's come <laughs> drunk stepdad just like coming downstairs, like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> At the mention He's... of Ari, you notice Kesfion, like, Sandria sits up straight. There's no slouch. She's up. He is pricked. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't touch go... my pigeon. Touch my pigeon. Maybe go check up on him and let the others know to come down there. I don't think he's going anywhere fast just now. We'll just kind of gesture down his front. Like, <laughs> don't think he's he's going anywhere of his own steam for a little bit, but it'll be maybe best to keep him on house arrest. He's in my room. What was my room? Yeah. Changing rooms. Changing up to his room. Well, whilst you do you Xerxes, you are a mentor here, yes? Uh, yes, yes I am. I require the presence of Amelia of the Chuck Ruani. I will, uh, I will be over there. And just gestures across the courtyard. 
and he and the Tathryn ignore the scene, walk past yourself towards uh, a couple of benches and a broken... A, a, so that some of the slabs have been broken and they've planted small uh, flowers in there just to give it a bit of colour. The Tathryn sits in front of it cross-legged. This enormous ivory wall for the soul forged and is interested in the flowers. Um, Artarian sits perfect, postured, the corset doing most of the work for him. Xerxes goes looking for the one called Amelia. We've not heard hiding or hate of an Amelia, have we? So you don't know the names of the students but you no. have seen the students yeah the one that he so Artarian said Amelia of the Chukruani which when yeah. I was describing them um, I said reminded you of your friend Griff in the way their clothing was brightly oh, coloured okay, 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 okay. so you yeah. could probably point yeah. them out you've just never yeah. introduced yourself yeah um, for your to go back they have thick muddy brown coloured hair feline eyes of yellow um, they're lithe and they do the, the cat movements but they have a humanoid uh, aesthetic to them but they do heavily remind you of Griff in their attire yeah. yeah. and you we'll see, see Xerxes that go start talk to, to such play a person out and be like right I'm gonna go start myself out as you are sorting yourself out every student that's not Xerxes and Amelia is moving around similar to when you arrived positioning that you spot it a mile away yeah. they're positioning in themselves in an advantageous <laughs> area just in case these two random whammers that have turned up kick off <laughs> little do they know <laughs> one's a fucking dragon <laughs> but and the mentors are doing similar. Now, you didn't notice that about the mentors before. They relied on yeah. their students to be able to handle anything you were bringing to the Darshan the Dusin. But even the mentors are, like, you know, the whole thing is a waggling next to the spell books and the swords. And the, there's just an uneasy feeling that Artarian is here with a massive soul forged. If he passes any of them, be they mentor or student, on the way back, towards how he came out onto whatever bit they're on he'll just kind of quietly say under his breath big one's a dragon and just continue down the steps they, they will kind of just hear the words and not really like did he did he just shout bananas at us like it's that sort of <laughs> right, does he know what he's just said <laughs> recognize the words order <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Pray you do not have to find out. That's how it goes. So you go upstairs to Ari and Co, yeah? Yep. You lot see Caspi on return. <laughs> she should. Be on her way down to see you. Zandria what? remained. She stood up, oh. but she remained eyes on Artarian yeah. and the Tathryn. She'll be down eventually. Probably. Uh, guess who's just rocked up? So, oh. friends. Ari, you are in this room until further notice. I don't care. Why? Because as long as the big dragon trapped in the suit of armour can't see you, you're not here in the building. What's left of it stays standing. Yeah, that's fine. They really didn't want to see me then, I see. Cool. Yeah, it was pretty much not verbatim, but what they can't see won't hurt us was heavily, heavily I mean, implied. I suppose, yeah, an Artarian did send me the message rather than anyone else. That kind of makes sense of 
RT yeah, didn't send you a message? That's, that's how we found out that they were coming. I got sent a message from them about I'll, an hour yeah, ago. Artarian told Larry. We're on as well. Sending. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, like, sometimes when... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, it doesn't doesn't matter. They're here now. Um, Kessel, like, kind of glance around and try and work out where his belongings ended up in the proceedings uh, and try and, like, rifle out some Ari Vom free kit. Um, and then like sort of almost like panically look up um to try and see um if and or what happened to the the bit of uh embroidery he'd been working on if it had managed to escape mostly on roll a d20 uh, oh no you better roll it i'm not getting blamed for him well it's where you left it. There doesn't seem to be any damage to it. That's good because it was left on the end of the bed. So, <laughs> <laughs> miracle among <I'm> miracles. <laughs> um, that will get, like, once he's kind of cleaned off his hands, will be, like, carefully, like, wrapped back up um, and it's stowed away um, out of reach of the malaise. Um, and he'll kind of pop over to the corner and change out of the worst of worst of the bog and clobber. Okay. So you do that? Um, what what what's the plan regarding where people are going to be? Um Ruby would like to go and find a space big enough to house a large magical creature. <laughs> What uh, would this Kess large magical born. creature be Khan the unicorn? It would. All right, cool. So Ruby will have... Um, would uh, Ruby go to the stables? I, a genuine question. Would she just go... Well, she doesn't uni- really know if there are stables. She kind of doesn't want to just so go s- outside because she's oh, no, not... Sapphire saw him. Because she's not really, like, mega sure she wants the entirety of the Darshaladushian, like... Getting in this business. It is. It, it, but... it is. Without knowing the ins and outs of this ruined fortress, it may take you a bit of time to find somewhere that you are confident is, like you say, just you and the unicorn. Um, there's definitely spaces. Um, it's just whether you're confident enough. Give me an investigation check. Confident. That's well rolled that's already. That's a fault. You might as well not roll that's already. Might um, as well not. You do find the space big enough. <laughs> um, and you are pretty confident it's just you two. Um, well, as long as it's sort of like... If I like, if I don't have line of sight to any of the others who are probably a little bit more interested in the... the you know, taking advantage of the fact here that I... So far, I'm less interesting than a, an eight-foot warforged and a, uh, that's, an incredibly that's, well-dressed. That's your judgment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you do find a. it is... Like, three-quarters of it is still remaining wall, and there are broken bits in the in the roof. It seems to have, <coughs> seems to have been some sort of storage area. Um, the fourth wall... We... Um, where the door would be is kind of broken away, and that it's as if like, there's barrel, like empty barrels, broken crates, cloth that have kind of made up that fourth wall. And as I say, you are confident that no one's seen you go in there, or this is a good place. And while Cass was talking to, or went down to check on Zandria, Ruby would have filled the others in that she does plan to intend. Okay. On, on doing this. So, as that's happening, Ruby's going to look for that room. Sapphire Kess. Are, uh, are you going to stay put? 
Well, we'll get Who to you. Want to stay we'll get we'll get to Ari. Kess and Sapphire. Uh, Kess had said that he would accompany Ruby. So as okay, soon as so you go with Ruby. Not covered in raw meal. We'll Sapphire. That. Sapphire's gonna want to go see Catherine, Sasha, and Artarian. Cool. So they leave the room. You're in the room by yourself, Ari. What does Ari do? <laughs> do you watch Caspian walk away and then fly out the window? Or <laughs> Ari will... <clears throat> Ari's not going to stay in the room, let's face it. He's a dumbass. Don't, um... you, don't you make excuses because... <laughs> <laughs> It's me or is this Ari? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. Mel's like, oh, Ari would totally like, run down the corridor. I want to press the buttons <laughs> with my 13 HP. Yeah. That's what um, I do if there was a dragon in front of me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, basically. Um, I mean, you're practically soulmates, you know what I mean? Ah. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, he's going to, he's going to sneak after Sapphire and like probably like just kind of have like doesn't necessarily need to get super close he just kind of wants to have eyes on really just to make sure are you so on. eyes on and hearing distance totally different are you planning on eavesdropping like is that how close you get eyes on or like eyes on would be quite probably just easy get eyes on, yeah probably get eyes on first and then kind of just see so like me, you'll clearly give me a stealth check like, he bears in mind what Kesfian has said. Are you like he's not... trying to hide from Sapphire at the same time? Like you're getting eyes on, are you going to say to Sapphire, I'm just going to get eyes on, or are you going to go full, let Sapphire no, go he... ahead and then... He's probably going to say to Sapphire. <laughs> Sapphire gets probably... like a sly grin and kind of <laughs> like... Pat on the back. Like, get... Yep, good, yeah, good I'm lad. Super <laughs> yeah. close, but I just want to check that they're not going to Okay, so give me, give me a stealth up. check. Okay, I don't trust any of my dice anymore. Sapphire says kind of almost cheekily, like, oh, if you can hide behind me if you need to. <laughs> Forget how broken he is, okay. I rolled a 15, which is damn nice. Plus yeah. 13. So 28. 28. Cool. Damn. Can you two give me a perception check, please? Oh, jeez. If, you've got, if you've got any bonuses towards hearing, then... I don't know if Sapphire does as a lean. I think it's scent only. Yeah, maybe. yeah, I think he's got a bonus on scent. I think yeah. hearing is like more wolfy kind of people. Oh, that's really good I get, though. I get uh, more stuff perception. on movement to be fair, but uh, perception. I'll say 26. Oof. 21. Oof. You both hear, as your door closes and you move a few feet down the corridor, you hear as if someone has moved the bed, just like the wood on wood sort of scratch. Mm -hmm. And the creak when you get onto a I mean this is it's not you know a beautiful bed it's old and rickety type thing but it does its job for letting you get a night's rest so you hear someone essentially sit on the bed or put weight on the bed that's what you heard last night doors what? closed you can go back and you do what you want but that's what you hear and Harry when you want to you know throw that 28 stealth in there just let me know <laughs> <laughs> it'll kind of like I'll kind of look at Sapphire and see if Sapphire heard it as well oh, yeah. so like... Sapphire is like not being subtle at all like Sapphire immediately <laughs> is staring at the door fur up on end <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it'll kind of just open I would the be door arching back again. if that's actually cat. Sapphire you smell salt hmm Usually when I'm smelling fiendish things, it's sulfur. I know this thing's mostly fey, but I wasn't expecting that. It he, smells he's almost the like the sea. You do what, sorry? He's opened the door again behind them so you, because he's only on the bed. You do. Sat on the bed, surrounded by a ring of salt, is a young girl with long black hair and no hands. Mm-hmm. Just, I know what that is, Meta. She's just staring at the door. Sapphire's seen it before as well. Oh, no, Sapphire, no. Yeah, Sapphire's seen her before. Twice? Yeah. Twice now? Yeah. 
Sapphire will just... I didn't... You, you can leave it? Yeah, I can. But sometimes when I'm in it, it's hard to come forwards. And sometimes my younger self comes forwards. It's difficult to explain. I'm sorry, it says to Ari. I'm not a fan of eagles. There's definitely a strain. It, it's hard to. It's hard not to. Not to see. I understand. Um. I'll leave you to it. I'll kind of shut the door to again. <laughs> just, just gonna, just gonna. Can y'all get out of my bedroom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> leave the spirits in the bedroom. Kes <laughs> gonna come back tonight. And be like, what the fuck is going on here? He's <laughs> putting salt now. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel like oh. It's giving you some tar and some salt, and it's like being at the sea. Oh, right? It's like the, basically fucking, the smells yeah. of your childhood right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the barnacles all over the ceiling. <laughs> how, so what are you how are you, are you, how are you doing? Yeah, Sapphire's staying. I was going to have a chat with her. You can see that she's been weeping, or at least there's dried marks oh, God, on her Sapphire's cheeks. Sapphire's staying, okay. Jeez, I better stay with Sapphire. Do you stay or yeah, do you I leave? Stay. I need no, he's to gonna have to like if Sapphire is staying, he's gonna have to stay because they have to stick together. Because this you know. one's dangerous. Yeah, because there's two of you can take her. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you ask Sapphire? How have you been? Yeah, tired. But soon, soon I'll be able to sleep. Why haven't you been sleeping? It's hard to keep your eyes closed when when they're always open. I need to yeah. need to stop the truth. It's it's you, you still need to rest though. Like we, we we're helping. We're going to be helping, and we've got more allies now to help. Can't. I can't rest yet. It's not. It hurts to rest. That's how. What do you? I don't understand. It's because you are young. Not used to hearing that, but I'll take it. Is there anything we can do to help? Give Artarian his sight back. Looks her how, how would we even what? The one who took it needs to give it back. Who took it? Looks at Ari. The eagle knows. My grandfather. Further back. There's not a smile, but there is a a glint in the eyes, a smirk. Not my grandfather. <laughs> not, not you, Eagle. And then gestures with her wrists with her hands and a lot towards you. But you know.
and then she gestures towards the bits of tar and such on the floor. It's confusing yeah, okay. to see you like this. When you say the word Malika, tears roll down her cheeks. Malika did that to Artarian. Just nod slowly. Oh, we're going to have to have a number of conversations with Malika. Malika's not in our good books for several reasons. I mean. No heart should be broken by their child. Okay, that's another step on the list of things we need to do. We can if help. I leans in close to Ari and whispers, do we, do we want to tell her about our potential idea? Okay, cool, just checking. And then quickly says, oh, you were sorry, I, I did, are you, you were saying something? Yes, but it's, it's okay. You don't have to tell me about your potential idea. It is flat. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Artarian can see then I can close my eyes they can keep watch for you and when I rest I can help and then I can go okay another step okay well, we have a potential thing that can trap really powerful creatures and we're going to potentially use it on one of the true. Big grin. Uh, if, will it work? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> don't know. It should. It's powerful enough to. But it's whether we're good enough to plan it so it works. If that makes sense. We will try to help Artarian, where we can. You. If I go up there, is your other self gonna not like that? I cannot say, but if. If my young self is forwards, it is a, a lack of. I shouldn't be here. None of me should be here. I should have been allowed to leave. But you already know the Eagles didn't let me. My ancestors have a lot to speak for. But we know this. And I understand why your younger self was not understand this fully and does not understand that I am not the same as my ancestors I will stay here if that's okay with you and not angry your young, younger self that would be nice Just 
hanging out in Kess's room. <laughs> 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 hanging out in Kess's room. He'll probably like try and like kind of be a bit more casual about it and just kind of let them sit on the bed and just like try and tidy up all of the lovely state that he's left the room in. <laughs> I'd like try and tidy it, tidy Kess's room up a bit. <laughs> Maybe, you know, clean up some of the vomit. Do you Maybe clean some... up any of the salt? No. Just go ask these things. Just go ask. <laughs> no. No. Just get I the mean, little hand he knows back enough. out. He knows enough about the Fae to know, because he has studied the Fae for a long time, even before he came into this whole thing. He knows enough not to touch the salt. And he, I think, yeah, because we have encountered... I forgot that we'd actually encountered them before, to be fair. So I thought yeah. it was just metagame Mel going, no, no. <laughs> but no, we, I mean, Mel's we have actually encountered the majority of Colossus, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the girl with girl no, with no hands. hands, I've, uh, yeah. The girl with no hands will remain seated on the bed with the Ring of Sun. <laughs> and, and as much as she looks saddened, she seems to be content with your two's company. Sapphire, do you stay or do you leave? I, I, you know what? I think Sapphire will hang out too. Okay. Sure. So, Mark, you two are hanging out. Cool. He's got Zandria cool. keeping an eye, I guess. So, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be fine. Kesfion cool. and Ruby. As Ruby, you were. Um, <laughs> as you are in. You, like you say, find this room. You're very confident. It's the best place to do this. You. um. Oh, you're in the this old storage area. There is a bit of wet straw, like it's it's just probably not used anymore. Just part of the car. There's not enough people for them to warrant using it. They seem to be able to deal with getting food and such. So it's just a very old place. Uh, Kesfion, give me a perception check, please. Can do. Oh, gems. Uh, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, that <laughs> is a twenty-five. As you are step, as you are both stepping into like the doorway area to get into this room, you kind of do one last look around, and you see Sisarin sort of does a little wave, and he goes, and just shushes, and he and he walks off, as if your secret's safe with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sneaking around. You are in the storage room. It's dark, danky. So Ruby will find the pearl. Speak Khan's name. What are you doing regarding Kesfion? You're just leaving him be. You're touching him. You're doing any stuff? No, I don't imagine we'd have been like in like touching each other as we yeah, walked in cool. like <laughs> Kess is also in the room cool like, he's a couple of paces behind you, just you, letting her do her thing yeah, you hear from a great distance hoofs hitting the plains like coconuts you know um, you hear the arrival of a beast a magnificent creature and you, you both kind of look in the direction of where the sound's coming from and you see upon the wall um, a nebula of stars just kind of appear across the wall. And you see Khan, this massive 18 hands unit with a large pearlescent horn protruding from his forehead, gallops through the nebula and then into the room where you are. If it had been a higher ceiling, would have probably gone on the back legs, but it's a bit dangerous. <laughs> And goes straight into Ruby, nuzzling, not with her heart. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred points of damage. Good damn knife Ruby. force. And goes straight in for the uh, for the nuzzle. So, well, instinctively, Ruby will react to that with you know no scratches and probably I don't know. Do we have polos in Colossus? You do now. That's what. Um... It's a toe and delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> now horses love polos so whatever treats she would give a horse at home because 
Ruby's probably still got she's got pockets full of dog treats and like mouse feed and like she'll have something in there so colossal the... unicorns eat a lot of meat I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> broad thing <laughs> um but having greeted him such try like actually probably like I'm I'm sorry to bother you are you in danger no but I think I need to know who I was do you need me to take you somewhere Do you know who my birth parents are? And if not, can you take me to someone who does know? Provided I won't be away for very long. Or unable to get back. I can take you there. I can bring you back. I cannot guarantee passage of time. She kind of half turns and looks at... Cass. Not so much for permission, but more sort of. The nebula. Is this a super bad idea. The kind nebula of? is still on the wall. Two minutes. Uh, and you'll kind of step around the corner um, of the room. And. Message isn't line of sight, is it? I don't think it is. I think it's just a shorter distance. I think we went yeah. through this. Feet. Yeah, I think we went it moons ago. I've got it. Yeah. I've fact, we've got the card here. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Literally feet. just sort yeah, of. Oh, okay, so I, yeah. I should be able to reach, for argument's sake, Ari. Is it a cantrip? <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure it's a cantrip. Yes. So, in theory, you could just try. And you'll know where the distances yeah. are. So, cool, 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 so cool. yes, Sapphire and Ari are in range. Xandria is not. Yeah. If you were to just, um, you know. Scraby time. Um, Thank you. Insanity gamer. Uh, going with Ruby and Can. Don't know time. Back ASAP. It was that Ari. Ari. Yeah. Can they respond? Okay. Or is it just one way? Uh, you can, can respond, respond to this message. message. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Remember your crit roll. I'll um, just watch it for the fights. <laughs> <laughs> um, going with Ruby and Khan. Don't, did you say you don't know how, how long we'll be? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Esh. Okay, um, you'll kind of respond and just go, okay, I'm here with the girl with no hands, with Sapphire, we're fine, it's all cool, good at your thing. You get a message back, and it just says, fuck's sake, and then silence. <laughs> Those two messages are brilliant. With a massive unicorn... Going away for a bit. See you soon. <laughs> oh, I'm with I'm with a girl with no hands. Probably a dragon. <laughs> just brilliant. I love yep. D&D. <laughs> We're both just you know in our own little vibes. It's fine. But he, you know, he's told someone. Uh, yeah, good. Harry's told someone too. In response to being told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You remember so, that that's the thing. Kess Ruby. Guess we're on a sent said message. Khan is stud, tall and strong. Do you wish me to carry the siren as well? If this is can. all telepathically to you, by the way, Ruby. Um, is it a problem to do so? 
If Khan could flex, he would. <laughs> uh, it's not so much not know, doubting know, his physical ability to carry <laughs> an extra medium-sized creature. It's you feel She's like, you feel not you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel the warmth of uh, safety, just just radiating from Khan as you ask that question, as if it's a non-answer, but not in a don't be daft sort of way it just yeah. feels right like when you ask it it's you know it just feels oh yeah I, I get it I get it Khan will drop a knee to make your mounting easier <laughs> Jesus I hate this game <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not your fault should have we 69 hit points <laughs> Um, Ruby will, and she probably will, even if he takes any, have to hop up, but she oh, will sort of, you, like, hop You vault. can get a boost. <laughs> yeah. like, um, no, 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 I think if, if anyone's used to, um, to mounting a horse from ground level and having to jump to do it, it's probably Ruby. <laughs> um, so she will just sort of, like, hop up and gesture to Cass. So, climb aboard. Hey, yep. You are now both astride um, Khan, the unicorn. Stands up, turns, faces the nebula on the wall. And let's be funny if it were a brick wall. <laughs> It'll hit the unicorn first. That's true. Just says, are you ready? You hear in your head. Yes. And with great speed... Wind flowing in Kesfion and Ruby's hair. Uh, so Ruby's done this before, so she was she would have said yes, but assuming Kess is behind her, she will have basically just reached back and grabbed an arm or something, just some kind of brace, so he just doesn't go like flying off the back. <laughs> yeah, just just by the chin beard, like no. <laughs> um, and Khan rides at the nebula. There is a similar feeling, I guess, every day for you, Ruby. You've come to recognise it recently, hanging out with these lunatics, travelling from material realm to fair realm and such. You just get that little like breeze sort of hit you. And you are riding through stars, constellations, miles and miles of it, nebulas all around you, pinks and purples and oranges and reds, and the deep purples and blues... Time is non-existent. There are moments where it could have been a minute or two. There are other moments it could have been a year or two. Khan is just full gallop, smooth through this through this nebula. He begins to slow ever so slightly. Then he's walking and stops. And you are in the vastness of space. Stars all around you. Staring out ahead of Khan. Constellations being of the Tolan Highlands. There are many folk. There's a few of the uh, a few of the tribes and clans actually that are into their stargazing. Constellations are a big thing in Colossus. In pretty much every creation myth ever across the world, it was the constellations that birthed the titans, that birthed the rest of it, and so on and so forth. You begin to see the stars that would form if you were to draw a line between them. The shape of a peacock with its feathers out. It's not highly detailed, I mean this is a constellation, but... Ruby, you kind of tilt your head, and that's what that's what it appears to you when you see these stars. Khan will start moving towards said constellation, and it is vast. Like you are craning your neck to see where the next point is and the next eye of a feather is, and such. And without realizing it happen, Khan trots into a courtyard, stone beneath the hoofs. You look around and the pillars are 
the architecture is of Vittoria. The white marble arches and the, the many pillars around. The courtyard has a mosaic upon it on the floor and it is of a peacock. Several peacocks. And then the more you look at it, you can't determine if it is one larger peacock or several peacocks making up this shape. It's hard. The minute you think it's one, you're confused and see the other. On the outsides, on the perimeter of this courtyard, there are warriors in uh, muscle caresses, uh, the, the chest plates, the Corinthian helmets, long single peacock feather out of each one. You see no no features beneath the helm, uh, just shadows of blue. Um, the Every one of them androgynous in nature, all holding a spear and a shield, a sword at their hip on the outsides. In front of you, at the end of the courtyard, you see wide steps leading up. I mean... Uh, by why I mean deep, the steps are deep. Like you can step up, take a couple of steps, then the next step, take a couple of steps, then the next step. And it is long, leading up to. It is a, it is a building and it is surrounded by pillars, and the motifs of peacocks are just overwhelming. Like the sculpturing that's been done, uh, spiraling up the pillars, like some of them are the peacocks with their feathers, like their tail, feather tails in. And they're kind of running up and around the pillars. The uh, arch that is above the pillars, it is maybe 50 feet from left to right. Um, there are many peacocks there and there are only small colorations of blues and greens. The majority of it is this white marble sort of coloration. But it is a structure that is clearly <laughs> devoted to anything peacock related. None of these warriors react to your presence Khan just trots and starts trotting up the stairs towards this structure. Maybe 10, 15 steps up, it plateaus out and the huge building in front of you is still 30 seconds a minute, who knows, walk away. But you see peacocks running around on the top of these stairs on this plateau and small pools, ponds that have been decorated with beautiful blooms of blues and greens. There's a pattern. Somebody's found their aesthetic here, haven't they? <laughs> Calm. Are they making that god awful noise they make, or are they quiet? The people. Khan, it's uh, it's delightful. <laughs> um, Khan will stop at the edge of the plateau, and the stairs that lead up from this plateau part are shorter and more human leg length apart. Um, there's a description I never thought to say. <laughs> And Khan just lowers in gesture for you to get off. Hop down. Yep. Khan will stand there, full Grab 18 arms, muzzle. neck up, and almost standing proud. I will be here when you wish to go home. Sure. Lean head into muzzle. And then Khan will kind of look towards the large temple-like building at the top of the stairs. Head that way then, I guess. As you get to the top of the stairs, I'm just assuming Kess is following, I'm not just killing yep. peacocks. Dual wheel, baby! Woo! <laughs> you, get to the, you get to the top of the stairs and you are before a colossal, gargantuan absolute specimen of a building architecture is stunning if there were wonders of the world which there is this could quite possibly <laughs> one of them standing in a doorway far too big for the uh, you know it's unnecessary but standing in the archway is a feline humanoid a uh, creature of elegance and beauty um, flows from them um, their cat like features they have a, a short nose their ears are small um, they have that elegance of, uh, of a domestic well looked after cat 
maybe maybe Kess's height. They are wearing a you will have never have seen this Ruby, but this this dress they are wearing is beyond formal and is of a makes the stuff that Harry dresses himself in look like he took it out of a bin like you know that sort of Ruby Ruby's probably thinking Harry should shop where she shops. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the decker it sweeps around them, so it's almost well, it sweeps sweeps around them, and the peacock feathers that are decorating it sweep around their form, and they just step towards you and just hold out their hand, and you can see the pads of the paw. In like a shake your hand kind of way, or like a in a palm up, palm up for you to take the hand is the gesture that they're giving. Glance back at Kess, but reach out her own hand and take take theirs. Follow on. He's here for support, not to do the stuff. Good egg. In the most delightful voice that I will unfortunately <laughs> will have to uh, rely on your they're imaginations. From they're from Sheffield by any chance. Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I would see you again, Sophia. And that is where we will end the session. Oh shit! <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So, <laughs> whoo! You lot make a lot of shit happen in these episodes. <laughs> so we will return, uh, hopefully next Tuesday. Um, Hang on. I'll confirm next Tuesday because lots of stuff's happening. But we should be looking uh, to be streaming next Tuesday, hopefully. If not, be the week after. Thank oh, you very much. Half time, yeah. 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 Thank you very much for tuning in, for following, for raiding, for subbing, and all that good stuff, and just just watching and being in chat. It's amazing. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. So we will deal with Sapphire and Harry talking to the girl with no hands. And we will deal with Kess and Ruby talking to a peacock dressed tabaxi. Split the party again, kids. Why do we do this? <laughs> and you never do it. You never do it like, oh, we're going to go in this cave and you go in that cave. You're like, let's go across worlds or, you know, countries. Oh, do it. Do it properly. I mean, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Right, so. Go big or go home. True that. Uh, it's been great. I love that. Uh, I have got some stuff to write. <laughs> and I can't wait. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, players, thank you very much for playing. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time for session 83 of uh, Fables Among Titans. Not far off the 100, kids. I know, it's crazy. I know. It's... Like three digits. Yeah. But for now, so good night, players. Good night, players. Good night, players. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.